Yo, peace was good. Happy Saturday. Hope all is well. Um, welcome to the Soul My City collection. This is part 99. I know it's been about two months since I did one, but within those two months, I have been collecting some CDs. So, um, without further ado, I'm showing you the CDs. I know you guys miss me. I missed you guys too. All right. Um, yeah, let's get started with the first CD of the video. First CD of the video is Kumo D's, uh fifth album. Funky Funky Wisdom, released in 1991. Um, you guys should know who Kumo D is. He's an MC from Harlem, New York. Known for his affiliation with, um, well, known for being part of the group, uh, the Treacherous Three at one point back in the day. Um, you know, Kumo D, you know, he's known for his, um, his feud with LL Cool J. Um, they went back and forth, you know, songs like How You Like Me Now, Let's Go, was towards um, LL Cool J. Um, Death Blow, you know, songs like that. Um, you know, Al Kuzi going back at him with, um, I think Jiggling, I think Jiggling Baby, um, was a diss towards, L, um, towards Kumo D. Um, Mama Should Knock You Out. A couple of the tracks that he, um, rap, um, To the Break of Dawn, off the Mama Should Knock You Out, which is a dope album. I did a review on that. Check that out when you guys get a chance. Um, but enough of that. This is fifth album. Uh, there's three singles of the album. The singles are How Cool Can One Black Man Be, Rising Sun featuring Karis One, and Death Blow, which, pff, yo, yeah, I'll, I'll get I'll get into that in a little bit. But um, what makes this album a little bit different than his late earlier albums is that you know Kumo D did all the production on this album because before, um, you know, I guess in his first two albums. He had production by um with um Teddy Riley. Teddy Riley did some of the beats on the album, and um <laughs> excuse me. And by the third album, Knowledge Is King, um that's when Kumo D actually started doing all the production on the album, and this album was no different. Um the only difference with this album compared to his early albums is that this album was a little bit more aggressive, which is what I like because um you know. Um, yeah, because when you listen to Kumo D, he definitely t has like a simplistic style, you know what I mean? And and I don't really fuck. I, I like Kumo D. I respect for what he is, but it's just I can only I could listen to him only for a little bit. Like I'm just not the biggest Kumo D fan. But with this album, it definitely this album will definitely like you know um, bring you into Kumo D. You know, I think this is a good album to start off with, even though. It's later in his career, but if you guys want to get into Kumo D, this album will be a great start to start with. And like I said, I like the production on this album. It definitely has like that aggressive vibe to it. You know what I mean? That's what I like about it. It's like it's, it's like a get away from this clean cut image and shit like that. So, um, but yeah, Death Blow, to me, he killed LL on that track. To me, he that song, he he um. He 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 murdered LL Cool like he to me he won that battle between him and LL, but like I mean he he goes he goes a little personal when he talks about I'll beat your ass like your daddy did or some shit like that and then I'm like damn, and he talks a little you know insults towards his mom to about um, but you know nothing too serious just saying like how um you know when I when I put you in the when I put you in the um when I kill you whatever. When you um have your funeral, your own mama won't recognize you. You know some shit like that. But and then what I like about this song the most is um how he had a play on um, on LL's acronyms where he would say um like a days ago um loser loser loser. You know some shit like that. Can't remember what he said, but yo he he really goes in on that track, man. And to me, he killed the bat. He killed LL. To me, Kumo D won the battle, but LL Kuje has a better body of work. I mean, you got albums like, um, you know, Bad, which is a great album. Mama Should Knock You Out, 14 Shots of the Dome. I know a lot of people don't like that album, but I think 14 Shots of the Dome is definitely one of his most underrated albums. Uh, Mr. Smith was pretty dope. Um, you know, the radio album, you know, shit like that. But, um, but to me, Bad, uh, Mama Should Knock You Out, 14 Shots to the Dome and and uh, Mr. Smith are his best albums, partner. That's just my opinion. 
But um, yeah, Kumo D Funky Funky Wisdom released in 1991. Very dope album. Um, you can find it, definitely pick it up. Next album is the Gridlock soundtrack. Very, very dope soundtrack. This is when soundtracks at one point were dope, man. Like, you know, where like you wanted certain songs that weren't featuring certain people's albums, you had to get the out the soundtrack to get it. This is one of them. Fucking love the soundtrack. This is fucking dope. The production on this shit is dope, 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 dope. Um, the two singles off the album are Wonder Dead or Alive featuring Tupac and Snoop Dogg. Um, rest in peace of Tupac, obviously. And uh, it's over now um, with Danny Boy. Um, yeah, the production on this album is very dope, man. I really, really enjoyed this album. Um, a soundtrack, I should say. Um, you got people like um, the Lady of Rage, who she put out a very she put out a very disappointing album. That um, what's the name of the album that came out '97? Um, Necessary Roughness, I think it was called. Very, very bad album, man. Uh, I was very disappointed, but I, I'll, I'll definitely get it and stuff like that one day. Um, you got that that nigga Daz or Daz. Um, yeah, J Flex, Storm, Off TV, um, Off TV, very dope group from Watts, um, Watts, California. I mean, you got mad, mad dope shit in here. The production is dope. I fucking love it, man. Um, definitely one of Tupac's last albums that, I mean, last, um, movies that he did. Because the last movie he did, I think he filmed was, um, Gridler, um, Gang Related, um, dope soundtrack too. I have to get that, get my hands on that one day. Uh, but yeah. Very, very dope. I highly recommend it. If you guys like West um, West Coast hip hop in the mid to late 90s, definitely dope. And to me, this is around the time that, you know, Death Row at the time, they were kind of on a downhill, you know, as far as like releases and shit. But this album is pretty dope. Um, even though it came out like 97, but it's pretty dope. Especially when it came out, when it came to Death Row, very dope. Um, this is Gridlock, the soundtrack released in 1997. Very, and dope movie too. If you haven't seen the movie, very dope. Alright, next album. Glad I found this. It is Obi Trice with Special Reserve, released in 2009. Um, this is more of a compilation album. This is pretty much an album that of songs that he recorded between 1997 and 2000. Um, which is all good, because based on what I looked up on, but Molly complains with the beats because the beats don't sound like from that time. And what happened was, Moss, he said in the interview, um, there's a video on YouTube where he talks about the making of the album, that he said that he had to redo the beats. I guess because the beats, I guess they were like too dated or something like that, or like, I don't know, I guess, I, something like that, but um, he, pro he probably changed the beats and they sound of at that time in 2008 2009 and um but overall very dope album um you know it's no no filler tracks no eminem bass tracks because that was my grab about what we tried because it was affiliates with eminem and it's just the production you know with you know from his first couple albums just wasn't really a big fan of that because Obi Trice is a dope MC. A lot of people sleep on Obi Trice, but he just need better production. That's my thing. And this out, this compilation album to me was a was the answer to that. And this is a very very dope album, man. I mean, uh, I think Got Hungry was a single off the album, but very very dope, very aggressive. If you guys want to hear Obi Trice over boom bap beats, um, just aggressive beats. This will be the album for you, man. Very, very dope. Um, like I said, it's not a real album. It's more of a compilation album, but it does play out as an album, you know, just based on the production. And that's what's dope about this album right here. Um, but yeah, Obi Trice with Special Reserve. Production is done by Moss. Moss, he did um, a whole bunch of other people's um, stuff. Like, uh, he did Eternia's album, which was pretty dope. I forgot the name of the album that she did. Um, I think it was called... Um, I think it was called like Last Exit, Last Exit, or some shit like that. Very dope, very dope producer from Canada. Very dope. Um, but yeah, Obi Trust with Special Reserve. Uh, this was released in 2009. Very dope shit. Next album. Finally got. I'm glad I got my hands on that. Um, didn't expect to find it when I was digging, but I found it. 
It is Flesh and Bones' second album, Fifth Dog Let Loose, released in 2000. Everybody should know um, Flesh and Bone is. He's known for his um, being part of a member of um, of uh, One Thugs and Harmony and stuff like that. I showed you guys his first album, the Thugs album, which very slept on album, very underrated album. Love that album. It's a very dope album. Um, after the first album, he was working on his second album. It was supposed to be called Book of Thugs. You know, I'm just going based on what it says on Wikipedia. But um, he got into a lot of legal trouble. And let's just say Flesh and Bone with guns don't mix very well. <laughs> I just have to say about that. Um, one incident was um, where he was at a, a relative's house. I think like a cousin's house. And he had like a sort of shotgun. And, you know... He refused to leave, you know what I'm saying? So, and they had to call the cops on him or some shit like, oh, the cops caught him with a sort of shotgun, you know, on property and stuff like that. Another incident was um, when he um, he pointed a gun at a next door neighbor because the next door neighbor was complaining about Flesh having his music played loudly. He's like, nigga, what? Fuck you. I'm playing my music. like. You know, that, like that kind of shit, like, I play how loud my music I want, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, not for nothing, but I like to play my music loud. I'm, I'm a big fan of that, like, I, I do that all the time. But there is a time and place for everything, like, you know, you know, in a residential neighborhood, you know, it, it's, you know, it's all, you know, have some decency, you know, have some respect, but that's just, my, that's just me, though. Um, And then another incident was where, um, he got into an argument with his best friend, I guess, whatever, and then he pointed a gun at him and things like that. So, um, because of all those incidents, um, he ended up after um, he ended up going to jail back in like 2000. Um, by the time this album came out, it came out back in two. He, he went to jail for like seven and a half years because he was supposed to do ten years, but then um, then he got out like for like I guess like good behavior I guess and um he got out um within seven and a half years because he went into jail like I think like late 2000 up to like um you know he got out in um 2010 so um was it no I'm sorry I'm sorry he got out in 2008 but like like the late 2000 like early to mid 2008 or some shit like that so it's like seven and a half years and shit but yeah um very dope. I don't like the production on this album. You know, a lot of people like to say this is his best album. I I tend to disagree. Um, I it's a, it's definitely a dope album, but I prefer the Thugs album over this album. Um, but yeah, I wanted to hear the the Book of Thugs album. Now that, that would be very interesting. But um, yeah, the song. There's a couple songs I really like. Um, I think Way Back was a single off this album. Featuring Lazy Bone and Miss Chaz. Um, there's a song called A Man featuring Montel Jordan. Very, very dope. Uh, it uses the same sample as um, it sampled the Get Up, Get Out off the um, Outcast's first time. Some plays the cast Cadillac music, which I did a review on. Definitely check that out when you guys get a chance. Um, it used they they sampled the beginning of the song and use that as the beat, and I think that I thought that was pretty dope. Um, very that that could have been a single too. Um, yeah, overall very dope album, man. But um, to me, not as good as his first album. But um, I'm glad I found this because I know this go this album goes a little bit for a little bit of money online. I shouldn't go for like 15 bucks, you know, something like that. But it's definitely out of print. But um, yeah, Flesh and Bone, the Fifth Dog Let Loose, released in 2000, very dope album. All right, next album. Glad I got my hands on this. Finally got my hands on this. Um, is Mr. Short Child with the with the Chop Shop, uh, released in 2001. Um, despite the the K, it's pronounced it's pronounced as Chop instead of Cop. You know what I mean? At first I was like, "Is a short cop?" Like, what the fuck? But it's actually ch Chop. Um, so it's um the Chop Shop released in 2001. Um, for those who don't know, who Short Chop is. He's an MC from um, South Central Los Angeles. Uh, he's known for his affiliation with um, with Ice Cube. He got he got founded by Ice Cube. Um, apparently, according to Wikipedia, even though sometimes Wikipedia is not a credible source, but 
I'm gonna just take it for what it is. Um, is um, he he was founded, you know, freestyle in front of Seven Eleven and Ice Cube found him and freestyle. He liked what he heard, so I'm assuming this is like around '97 that he founded him and then put him under his wing. And then his first appearance on Wax was actually on the Player soundtrack. Um, um. It was a song with Ice Cube. I think it was called uh, "Who You Want to Love" or some shit like that. I forgot the name of that. And it was, he was also featured on two songs of um, the War and Peace album, the, the War Disc that came out in '98. Uh, he was on the he was featured on the single uh, "Pushing Weight," as well as um, um, "Who You Fucking" or "If I Was Fucking You" or some shit like that. And then finally he came out with this album right here. By far, very, very, very very dope album fucking love this album man um the production on this album very dope um the thing with short chop though he has a very distinctive very unique distinctive voice um <laughs> the best way to describe him vocal wise is um he reminds me of a gangster version of Bugs Bunny. I know that sounds funny as fuck, but if you listen to his the way he raps, and you 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 know how Bugs Bunny sounds like, then you guys will get where I'm coming from. But overall, I mean, you'll get used to it. Some people might not get used to it. Um, I can understand that. It's very it's in a very acquired taste. But man, this album right here, though, like the beats on this album fucking sick I mean you got songs like Braveheart very dope way to start the album you know even though the intro was a skit but Braveheart is the first song yo best way to start the album I mean yo like the way it, it, it sets to me it sets the tone of the album um Kingpin and the Knockout Pass the Pussy featuring Corrupt One Way to Win I mean this whole album is dope but you know my introduction to him was actually back in 2001 um which is um featured the song dollars dank and drank no i'm sorry dollars drank and dank featured cocaine which was actually the single of the album um because i remember that back in 2001 rap city used to play that a lot that was like the video and unfortunately that was like the only single we ever came out with and this is the only album we ever came out with is just sad because um yeah it's, it's such a dope album man and Unfortunately, this album is actually out of print, but um, but yeah, very dope album, man. If you like, I'm telling you, this shit right here, I I, I recommend. If you guys like G Funk hip hop, then you will definitely enjoy this album right here. Very dope. Um, Mr. Short Chop with the Chop Shop released in 2001. Very dope. If you can find it, definitely pick it up. So much time I got left. I still got some time. See. All right. Alright, next album is uh, Mob Deep's Blood Money, released in 2006. I believe this is their seventh album. Because you got Juvenile Hell, The Infamous, Hell on Earth, Murder Music, Infamy, America's Nightmare, and then this. So this would be their seventh album. Um, this was released in 2006. Um, this is when they joined with G Unit, and that caused a lot of controversy. Oh, let me turn this down. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, so, um, yeah, so, this is when they joined G-Unit, to me, which was, like, a bad mistake on their part. I understand they're trying to make money, but it's just, like, it, to me, it tarnished their body of work, in my opinion. But, you know, every album, every artist have that one bad album, and this is one of them. I know a lot of people talk shit about Juvenile Hell, but I actually like Juvenile Hell. But, you know, I'm, I'm in a minority in that. Excuse me, I'm in a minority in that, but you know, it is what it is. Um, there are a couple of singles off this album. Um, singles are Put Them in Their Place. Um, I think Creep was a single. Creep, Put Them in Their Place. I know some of you guys going to say Out of Control with 50 Cent, but that was more of a 50 Cent song, and that was. More the, that yeah that was that was more a Fifty Cent song more so than than a Mob Deep song, 
Um, I know the infamous was a single too, but it was like a more underground single. Um, I think Give It To Me was a single too. But um, yeah, this album is like a love hate relationship with this album because um, you know it's it's hit and miss, man. And you know the problem is that the direction of the album. And one thing a lot of people don't understand is that when somebody executive produces an album, that's very important because an executive producer is responsible for the direction of the album, what beats they should use, you know, the subject matter, you know, shit like that. And the executive producer of this album is 50 Cent. So that's why when you listen to the album, it has like that 50 Cent vibe to it, you know what I mean? And the album was, uh, it felt more like a 50 Cent song, uh, album, in my opinion. It sounded like something that, you know, he would have done like a mixtape or some shit like that. And, you know, at the time, you know, Mob Deep were kind of like hit and miss around that time. But, you know, I mean, they had some decent songs, like, Put Them In Their Place was pretty cool. Um, Click Click with Tony Yayo was pretty dope. Um, Pearly Gates featuring 50 Cent, very dope. Like that joint, Capital P, Capital H was pretty dope. Uh, Daydream was dope. The infamous feature of 50 Cent was dope. But overall, man, this album could have been a lot better. And I'm glad they left G Unit after that because it's just, it, it wasn't dumb. And then it's crazy because this is the first album that, you know, they have, they don't have nobody, no QB affiliated artists. Like, you know, people like Cormega or Infamous Mob, no Big Noid, which is kind of weird. No Littles, you know, none of that, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. Uh, Mob D with Blood Money, really 2006, could have been a lot better. Um, next album, glad I found this, well, glad I got it actually, is Raekwon's fifth album, um, Shaolin vs. Wu-Tang, released in 2000, 2011. Um, very dope album to me. I know I'm gonna get a lot of shit for this, but I prefer this over Cube Links 2. Because Cube Links 2 had too many filler tracks um the story under the, with this album was that because around the time uh when eight diagrams was coming out uh they were supposed to have an album called um shallow versus wu-tang but um it was going to feature um different producers instead of risen doing all the beats and raekwon's explanation with that was that um he just wanted to give other producers a chance and i respect that you know what i mean um, but they ended up coming out with eight diagrams, which was horrendous in my opinion. I still feel that to this day. Um, I'll do a proper review on all the Wu-Tang albums eventually. Um, don't know when, but eventually I will. Um, there's a couple of things off the album. Shaolin vs. Wu-Tang, which is the first thing off the album. That was pretty cool. Uh, Butter Knives, that's my shit. Fucking love that track. Love, 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 love that track. That's actually the first thing off the album. And, um... Rock and Roll featuring Ghostface and Jim Jones. I didn't really care for that song, honestly. Didn't like the beat. Um, just wasn't digging that shit right there. Um, to me, that shouldn't have been a single. Um, believe it or not, oh, Rich and Black, I believe it was a single too, but that was like more of a underground single. Believe it or not, Molasses featuring Rick Ross and Ghostface Killer. Dope. Rick Ross, I'm not a big Rick Ross fan, but Rick Ross does his thing on that track. He does his thing. That should have been a single. Um, yeah, this whole album is fucking dope, man. Production-wise, to me, it made up what Cuban Links 2 should have been. Even though Cuban Links 2 has decent joints, but it just wasn't, it's just uh, too many filler tracks, and it was way too long. I think it was like 24 tracks. Way too long, in my opinion. Um, this has 17 tracks. I think that's good enough. Um, but yeah, Shaolin vs. Wu-Tang. By Raekwon, released in 2011. Very dope album. Definitely one of his best albums in his discography. Not just Cuban Links, because Raekwon has these some other dope albums, and that being one of them. So, um, next album, <sighs> I had to pick it up just to fill up, you know, this guy, um, this MC's legendary MC's discography, and it is Nas with the Untitled album. I think this is his ninth album. Uh, let me see. Yeah, his ninth album. Uh, this was released in 2008. Uh, everybody should know this is known as the Nigger album, you know, but it's called Untitled for political reasons. 
that kind of thing. Um, this album, I hated this album. Like the production, it's a fucking production. I just hated this shit. Um, you know, the difference with this album is that um, you know it's very political and things like that. But I feel like the beats should have fit the subject matter. Um, the singles of the album, there's two singles, are uh, Make the Go World Go Round, featuring Chris Brown of The Game, and Hero featuring Kerry Hel- Hilson. Oh my god, that song fucking makes me, ugh, like, ugh. Like, that felt more of a Kerry Hilson song over a Nas song, like, just the beat itself. It just, ugh, it, no, no, Nas, no, 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 no. And like I said, I think he dropped the ball for not calling the nigga album, even though that's what it's known for, the nigga album. But like I said, he had to drop it for political reasons. Um, just the production, I just wasn't really digging, man. And there's a lot of controversy with this album because, um, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, saying that, you know, Nas didn't really write his songs. They were saying that, um, you know, um, M1 from, or Slick Man from Dead Prez was writing the songs, things like that. But that I think he had help with, uh, the song Sly Fox, because you know he's dissing towards you know Fox News and Bill O'Reilly. I think he had help writing that song, but other than that, I think you know Nas, he you know he wrote the songs and stuff like that. But and it, it it got to the point where people was just questioning Nas like, oh, I bet he didn't write Illmatic and you know it's like all this crazy shit. So it, it was crazy, but um, but yeah, this album could have been a lot better in my opinion. I I just wasn't feeling this album at all. Um, ugh. Distant Relatives with Bob Molly, I mean, Damian Molly, wasn't even better either. Wasn't doing that. Life is Good, to me, his good comeback album. So, next album, glad I got my hands on this. Uh, Michelle Lay with her self titled album released in 1989. That's my song that I left. Alright, I gotta do this quick. Um, released in 1989. At one point, you know, it was. Um, Dr. Dre, Dr. Dre's girlfriend at the time, you know, around that time and stuff like that. Released in 1989, there's five singles off the album. The singles are Normal Lies, Nice T, If, Something In My Heart, and I think Never Been In Love, I think it was. Normal Lies, Nice T's Keep Watching, Something In My Heart, and If. Those are the five singles off, off this album. Um, Production-wise, it's a bit different, you know, from Dr. Dre's um, you know, early production, because, I mean, you can still, you can still, um, hear the straight out of Compton type production on this, but then also, like, it has, like, that, um, if you guys know about JJ Fad, it has, like, that style of production, too, on this album, um, which is pretty dope, because, you know, something different from Dr. Dre, um, and then, you know, he has, like, some, you know, Organic samples and stuff, like organic um stuff that he um does, like he plays himself and stuff like that. It's an okay album. He's not the best. It's not. It, it's cool to have just because it's Doc, is Michelle A, and it sounds a little bit hard to find. Um, it's a bit rare, you know. Goes for a little bit of money, but I got lucky and I found this at Fye for three ninety nine. So, but yeah, Michelle A, with um her self titled album released in 1989. Last album of the video is um, Gang Green with their first album, um, Got a Water release in 2010. Uh, Gang Green is a hip hop group from LA, consists of Alchemist and Oh No. Um, from what I understand, they met each other at a Dilated People show and they clicked. And then their first appearance on Wax, I think, together was um, on Alchemist's. Um, Chemical Warfare album, his second album that came out in um, 2009, very dope album. Um, he was fe- they were featuring two songs together, The Actors of Violence and Under Siege, which was a single of the album. Very, very dope album, highly recommended. And then in 2010, uh, they dropped um, an EP called The Soul Blade EP, which was kind of like a teaser, um, like an appetizer towards this album. Um, they had like one of my favorite songs of the out of that EP called Operation Room, our Operating Room, which I had that on this album, very very dope. And then they came out with this album. They have four singles of the album. The singles are, I believe, Not High Enough, Chain Swinging, All Bad, and 